it really is intriguing to see after all these years of football. It's like there's only so many places in pizza they can put cheese, right? It's all over the top. It's in the crust. Like, where the hell else can you put cheese? And for NFL offense, how much more can you do that hasn't already been done? But the Lions, Chris, are finding ways to do some things that are outside the box and beyond the boundaries of what we're used to seeing. Yeah, they got a great blend of outside the box, creativity, new age stuff rooted in, hey, we're old school, smash mouth, going to hit you in the mouth. We're going to come downhill and run the football and we're going to be great with play action pass off of it. But we're going to have some splash and some game plan plays that you didn't prepare for. There's no way you could have. And we're going to break them out in the football game and make your head spin for a little bit. And that's where they have found just the right touch there between Dan Campbell and, of course, the, the offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, who's you know up there with the top candidates in the sport to be a head coach next year with the way things are going and the way he's calling plays on that side of the ball. And we've seen offensive coordinators in the past who were trying to get themselves noticed for head coaching jobs. And I think of some of the kooky stuff Hugh Jackson did when he was with the Bengals as offensive coordinator, trying to get back as a head coach, like lining offensive linemen out yeah, wide right, and just right, like, Oh, right. That's a guy. That's a guy who's trying to design a really creative play to become a head coach. But Ben Johnson, this one, this one to me, this is the direct snap to David Montgomery, the running back through the legs of Jared Goff. Never seen it before. Quarterback needs to be just tall enough for it to work, but he's under center, Goff is. Yeah. And the ball comes through his legs to Montgomery. Goff acts like the ball got snapped past him and he's back trying to pick it up. That's that's just like it's hiding in plain sight and nobody bothered to ever do it. And Ben Johnson realized it. They drew it up. They executed it. And there it is. No, you know, I think we're seeing you know, Ben Johnson and the Lions do that. We, of course, have seen Andy Reid do some of this crazy stuff, right? Where it's like nobody's ever done that before. We're seeing Mike McDaniel and the Miami Dolphins do stuff where we go, wait, we never saw people do this on the offensive side of the ball, right? And, and it is amazing, the creativity there. I mean, this is third and six. And the right time to do it. It's not only third and six. And, you know, if it isn't for Derek Brown, he's going to get it on the right side there, but he has to cut back to the left. But, you know, at a point in the game, too, where, hey, we're up by 18. We can risk this a little bit. Let's put it on film. Let's mess with the next team that's got to prepare for us. Now they got to worry about some of this. And then you don't know what they build off of it, too. That's where they're great. But, you know, like we talk about with a lot of great offensive coordinators and what they do, right, Mike? I mean, we kind of make – we know the good ones. And then – there's some out there that, you know, hey, it's it's basic, it's boring, or they try to emulate the good ones, but they don't have a rhyme or reason. They don't know why they're doing it. They're like, wait, we sent this guy in motion and this guy here, that guy look cool on film, so we put it in and we like it. But but what they don't realize is guys like Ben Johnson and McDaniel and Shanahan, they have real, true, tried and proven, and we know what the defense is going to do, and we're going to screw it over right now because I know their rules, and that's where they separate themselves, and that's where this, this Lions offense almost feels unstoppable that way. Let's hear from quarterback Jared Goff on the unique challenges of being under center <clears throat> while the ball goes through your legs to the running back. Never hit my leg. Uh, just the timing on what I was saying. Um, it was it, we we were snapping it on JMO. Come on, like bringing bringing snap motioning him in. So when I said JMO, come on, ball got snapped. Um, so yeah, there was a little bit of uh, play around with when we wanted to snap it and uh, doing that. But no, we never hit it off my leg. It was good. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful where yeah. that direct snap goes yeah. when the quarterback is standing there. You don't want to. You know what? I end up talking like this, <laughs> which is a possibility. <laughs> Definitely a possibility, right? But cool with the little nuance there in the snap count, right? He can't get underneath and act like, hey, it blew 45, blew 45, or he might be talking like you're talking about after that. So, yeah, stand there, act like you're bringing in motion. They, got, uh, they worked on that all week. 
they're fun to watch. They are. I mean, they're aggressive as hell. That's the thing I think we like. At times I go, man, it's too aggressive. Do we have to go for it on fourth down all the time? All of that. But I think they've found the right blend in that department too. And then you couple that play with what their real offense is. And then we saw another trick play earlier in the football game, right, that we saw again on Sunday night. Just the timing and when to, when to know to call things. And I believe if memory serves me correct here, it's 21-7, to and this might have been the first play after the Bryce Young interception. Uh, I feel like it was after a turnover either way. But, again, just the knowing of what you're going to get in this personnel set, let's run this play. We saw it on film all week. And if the guy who's guarding Laporta sees the run, he seems to over-aggressively play the run, and we might need to be able to sneak behind him. It's it's really brilliant game planning by the Lions staff. Sam Laporta had two touchdowns on the day. He's been one of the best tight ends so far in this rookie class, if not the best. And behind the defense, it worked like a charm. That's always a great spot. If it was right after a turnover, that's a great spot to do something like that because the defense is kind of on their heels and down in the mouth. And you, it was. Just, it was right after. Yeah, you're you right. They just ran on the field, right? They're just like, wait, oh, wait, wait, we got to go. We're running out there. And it was right after the Bryce Young interception. I just double checked that. Yes. And later that same day on Sunday Night Football, 49ers Cowboys with 26.1 million watching. The 49ers did the same damn thing same damn play brock purdy that's right george kittle touchdown and kyle shanahan acknowledged after the game he saw that it worked for the lions so he decided we're gonna go ahead and use it tonight yeah and and again it's 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 checks and balances like i like to say a lot right keeping people off your bread and butter meat and potatoes offensive football plays and that's where those are two guys, and Ben Johnson and Shanahan, they have a great feel for that. Oh, wait, they over – hey, when we played the Cowboys in the divisional game last year, all they did was crowd the line of scrimmage and have people attack the run, attack the run. And it's like we talked about yesterday, great offenses make you stop something elite about them first. Well, the 40 guys run the ball. Oh, you want to overcommit to do that? Hey, come on, get up here closer. Get a little more aggressive, guys. Boom, and then they hit you with that. You know, it's it's the right touch and knowing how you're going to be played, game planning, and feel for the moment that you know Shanahan and Ben Johnson are as good as it gets in that department right now. That's what makes them dangerous. And it's like we said with the Lions, you know, the Lions are scary, and and they, there might not be the Eagles and the Niners, but we're sitting there right now going, eh, the Lions might be next. You know, they'd be a handful for the Dallas Cowboys. There's no doubt because they'd be able to do some of the things we've seen. The 49ers do. They can run, and they're big up front, and they'd make the Cowboys commit to stopping that. Uh, and that's where they're they're dangerous. They really are. I'm liking watching this Lions team. And with that schedule, with that division, yeah. they could be in the mix to be the number one seed in the NFC because they're probably going to go 6-0 and against the NFC North. I'm not going way out on a limb to suggest that. So Let's you're just saying they're going to beat the Vikings twice, huh? That's just, that's just bam, yes. just like that. Damn. What the kind Vikings of fan are, are you? Four. They're gonna be they're <laughs> gonna be either two and five or one and six after that Monday night game. I mean, I used to look forward to watching the Vikings on Monday night football. I dread what's coming in thirteen days when the 49ers go to Minnesota. Uh, so I don't I don't do that. That, that damn horn's gonna get smashed to obliteration that day. I'm gonna enjoy that. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.